yes, I'm here with these awesome entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs, whatever you're drinking, <laughs> whether it be tequila in your cup or what was the other one? Tequila. Tequila, tequila right. <laughs> you need to go on Urban Dictionary right now and put it in there. <laughs> tequila. Entrepreneur. 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 Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. Yeah, that. <laughs> but entrepreneurs get together and they drink brew. <laughs> I guess it could be beer too, right? <laughs> I'm steeping as we speak. Right. <laughs> so guys, why don't y'all tell us a little bit about what you do and um, and I know you, you guys do some stuff on your own as well as together. Yes. yes. Um, so I am a musician, entertainer. Um, I've been singing since I can remember professionally like for the last like 10 years. Um, and I have basically put myself in a situation where I am doing this full time. It's really scary almost every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't be doing anything else. And um, and your name is Melissa. Melissa, I'm sorry. Colton. My name is Melissa for ten years. And sometimes we think about the dream more than ourselves. See, that's what it yeah, is. Sorry, I'm like yeah. it doesn't matter who I am. This is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and Isai, um, you want to tell us a little bit about what you do as well? Yes. So uh, my name is Isai Salinas. Um, I do a little bit of music more this year. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, doing a lot of audio engineering now. Um, a lot of web design has been my passion. Uh, web design is really what got me into entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, a lot of my my years in high school have realized that I had a lot of entrepreneurial tendencies. You know, literally selling the shirt off my back to a kid in class because he liked my shirt. You know, so burning CDs and selling them to students and stuff <laughs> like that. Like, hey, you know, but um, kind of just discovering the process and, you know, from music to um, doing web design, internet marketing kind of thing, helping out businesses, you know, whether locally or abroad, you know, it's been my passion. Right on. So how long have both of you guys been doing your craft? Um, I've been unofficially singing since I was like music and okay. not so much for my family, but just honestly for myself. Um, and little by little, I kind of like got back into music like full time. Um, and, uh, it's music is one of those things. Like since I was a kid, you can ask anybody in my family and like, Oh, she was always singing. She was always you know, doing this. I was really shy, but I was always wanting to be in music. Um, and uh, I found a way to get over it and get over myself and um, just pursue my passion. That's awesome. So is it a lot easier today to get out there and get over yourself or is it difficult every time? Uh, that's like a loaded question. Um, as far as performing, like I, I, I literally feel at home when I'm on stage and I'm connecting with audiences. It could be literally one person. It could be, you know, I've been in front of like thousands of people and I feel very comfortable um things i almost like step outside of myself and i become this like not so much like a sasha fierce type personality but it's like this is where i get to connect with people in a way that i'm no longer me kind of like introducing myself i'm like oh this is what i do i'm like oh yeah by the way right. is Melissa. You know, <laughs> like me connect me as a human being connects with other people and it doesn't matter what race they are what gender what whatever their background is like if there's a song that we all love and we connect with it and they connect with me interpreting that song like that's that's like where, that's where I live. So it's uh, some kind of new universal language for you that you like to share with everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's very cool. And uh, how did you guys meet? Because now you're, you're entrepreneurs starting off by yourselves and then you came together and now you're doing stuff together. Well, he was being entrepreneurial. <laughs> that's true. No way. No way. <laughs> yeah, I, was being I know, right? <laughs> Um, so that's a <laughs> entrepreneur. I can't say, I can't say it. <laughs> you know, um, at the end of the at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year, um, you know, I really had set an intention to want to change things. Really, you know, I know I know we've all talked about it together, you know, lunches or stuff like that. But really having like that, setting an intention and putting the energy out there of you know wanting to change, wanting something different. And at the beginning of, the, of you know this year, I put out so much energy literally my whole life has kind of changed direction and uh, really focusing on social media platforms, uh, really kind of starting to push out some advertising, push, you know, promote myself, that kind of thing. 
And in doing that, engaging with the community, you know, uh, we ended up connecting and then we ended up going to a music, or ended up going to one of her shows actually. And from there we kind of just connected and I was like, man, like you have such a marketable presence, you have such a marketable energy, you know, and seeing her entrepreneurial <laughs> side, <laughs> you know, seeing her entrepreneurial side, it was like, yeah, like let's, let's try and do some stuff together. So since then it's, you know, we've done gigs together now from just being, just, just literally from one post, you know, on the internet and something like that, like um, literally setting an intention and just connecting with people and doing that kind of thing. So that energy that you were, you're describing the one that made you want to change and, and do more things. Um, how do other people find that energy? It's man, it's really, really is un uncovering it within yourself. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, it's like seeing where you want to be and then seeing where you are and bridging the gap through action. Uh, there was a post I put up a long time ago and it was like action is the bridge between dreams becoming reality. And it's like, man, people think all the time, like, man, I could do this, you know, I could do that. And it's like, you just got to do it to get there. And I don't know if this really answers the question, but it. No, it, it totally does. It, it, it sounds like you're saying it's like a magnetic pool. So you have where you're at. And then once you realize there's this other pole, yeah. which is your dreams, you're drawn towards it. And yeah. that's the energy that you're feeling. I like that. Yeah, That's exactly. way cool. No, I like that a lot. Um, <laughs> So let's see, what, what made you guys, I mean, obviously aside from, you know, your, your passion for, for wanting to sing and, and things like that, what made you guys realize that this was the right niche for you, that this is what you wanted to do? I mean, because there's a lot of ways to get to our goals, right? A lot of uh, vehicles and things like that, but you guys chose this in particular. Tell as us why. As far as like what we do? Yeah. Or, um there's literally nothing else I would rather do. I've done other things and I've gotten, you know, I would, I was really good at it, but it was like waking up every day was like a chore in the sense that I'm like, Oh, I have to go do this or I have to go there that because that's how I buy stuff, you know? Right. And it was, it was literally just like, like a conveyor belt of life where it's like, okay, you're just kind of literally going through the, um, and I, you know, I wasn't excited about life. I wasn't excited about what I was doing. I, I could be really good at like convincing myself, like, oh, I'm so excited about this. And I'm, you know, I'm like, eh, like, no, not really, you know. Um, so now, like, every day I wake up, it's like literally like Christmas. Like what I would think of how I feel. I think a, a kid would see Christmas every day. You wake up like what's under the tree and, who, you know, Who's going to be there? Am I going to see Santa Claus? You know, that kind of concept is that's how I wake up every day. Um, that might be at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m., but when I wake up, you know, <laughs> that's, you know, the feeling I have of, you know, what's going to happen today? You know, I'm excited about this. Or I'm excited about that. Um, and that's like the umbrella, you know, every day isn't going to always be perfect, but the idea is, you know what, like, I, I, I have stuff around me. I have people around me because I have chosen to do this as a living and I feel everything just feels right. And I've heard people say that like in interviews, I'm like, well, how do you know it's right? How do you know? Like you literally like just know. And it's, it's scary. I'm not saying it's perfect every day. It is scary. And I recently put up a post saying like what I do for a living scares me every single day, but that's why I do it because you know, you get told or you tell yourself like you can't do this you can't do that and when every day you wake up and you still do it it's like you're almost like reconditioning yourself to say like no like you almost need to tell yourself like to stop talking and just start doing stuff yeah just take action right yeah it's yeah. the same thing yeah yeah, <laughs> it's, it's same. Though, yeah. i mean it, a lot of it comes down to to tasting a little bit of everything you know whether it's you start off like for me, I started off with music and then went a little bit into sports or skateboarding. And mm -hmm. then it was like, uh, you know, I can't, you know, some like physical activities aren't, you know, like sports isn't sustainable for forever. Music is something that's sustainable forever. Entrepreneurship is sustainable forever. And, you know, 
it, it really was kind of, it really did come down to, to just trying new things going like like going to different restaurants or trying new meals or just and and a lot of people get caught like they like they're afraid to try it because they don't know what the result is going to be but it's in just doing it and discovering it that you're like oh you know what this actually isn't as bad as i thought it was going to be right you know like even even she could say at the beginning of the year like it's been a few years since i'd been on a stage or even just been in front of a microphone or in front of a group of people and i was terrified to even just do karaoke or something like that like i was terrified <laughs> yeah. yeah so I, I was terrified and you know i had a lot of encouragement from from my from my friends from melissa just, just do it just you know rip off the band-aid so to speak and it's like all right and then after doing it you're just like oh, hey that wasn't so bad i kind of want to do that again like you right. get that rush, you get that rush, that, that, that adrenaline. And it's just like, you know what, that actually felt really good. And you grow from that, you know, like I was just saying, it's scar- it scares you every day, but like, you know, there's growth in that. And you build that emotional muscle of just like when something comes up that you're like, ah, oh, you get that feeling. You're like, you know what, I know this feeling. So I, I can, you can push through that feeling and just do it anyways. And I think that's a huge differentiator between the action takers and people that don't take action or, you know, aren't pursuing their dreams, so to speak. Well, doing something different is definitely, um, it's one of those things that you, most people won't do because they're outside their comfort zone. I've been having a lot of people ask me why I shave my beard. And that's, ex- that's actually why is because I just wanted to do something different so I can get some kind of different results. Cause yeah. if you change one thing in your life, you're likely to change a lot more than that. Yeah. I don't care if you want to start wearing a flower in your hair, like <laughs> it'll, it'll change something. So, um, what is, what is unique about both of your, uh, businesses versus other people in the same field? What do you bring to the table that no one else has? Um, what, this is what I feel. I mean, other people could obviously feel something different, um, is, even though what I do for a living is what I do to put food on the table, I, I make a very conscious effort to not look at what I do as a job. Mm-hmm. You know, people are like, oh my God, you get to like, you know, go out every night or you get to like perform every night. And, you know, it can be really easy to go on the slippery slope of like, well, I got to go to work. Right. And when I, when I've spoken to him, when I spoke to my family, to my mom, like, you know, like, oh, you know, like, do you go to work? I'm like, well, I have a gig today. Like it's it's about like how I like present it even to myself. Like mm-hmm. oh, I have a gig today, I have a performance today. It's not I gotta go to work. I gotta go, you know, be happy for you know people so they can be happy. Like I I do say that, but it's more like it's not I gotta go act happy for people to be happy. I'm like I get to act happy for people to want to be happy. You know, like I look at myself almost as. Um, without my ego in the way like with as a therapist of sorts but not because of me personally but because of what i do and i use that as a way to connect with people and you know they could have a really bad week but i play this song that they've never heard someone play you know and they're like oh my god i've never heard anyone sing that song before it's one of my favorite songs or that one song that you know um everybody just knows and so we sing that and you see everybody's like faces light up and it's like oh that song's annoying but man, it's so funny. And it puts a smile on their face. Like I'm just really conscious of how I perceive myself. It's a work in progress. It's not like a perfect thing for me. Um, mm. but I'm, I'm just very much aware that this is what I do for a living, but I love what I do. Um, it's not a job by any means for me. So, but how does, how do you feel like you stand out, you know, from other people that do the same kind of stuff? So because of that, I feel like... Is, know, it, is it your passion that, that makes you different from passion, everyone else? I feel like a lot of us musicians in general can get on that vibe of like, it's just another gig, whatever. Right. Like, very okay. glad you got it. And I'm like, no, like I'm excited. If five people show up, I'm excited. And if anything, the smell the crowd, the more I'm like, I've got to really like, you know, put my hair up and, you know, sleeves roll up. Like I've got to like work this crowd so that you know you never know who's going to be there and i'm not like oh there's two people here we can just like kind of like blow off this gig because it's like it's a loss like you're gonna have that thought but i always like like no like you know i've got to like work twice as hard now because the energy that i that needs to happen 
I'm going to have to work twice as hard to make it happen because people are like, oh, there's only five of us here. So we can't cheer. We can't clap. We can't, you know, interact with, you know, the musicians on stage. I'm like, no, like even more so let's, you know, talk about life. Now it's more intimate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, I look at it in that sense and I, I'm not saying everybody does it, but I have seen where some musicians get into that slump of like, uh, whatever like it's just people here like whatever so, so what i'm hearing is that people don't hire you for a gig they invite you to bring your energy yes and i don't advertise everything is word of mouth so i i'm very appreciative of that and that it's it's a, that's more of a huge compliment to me when people say like um you know we have such you have you bring such a great energy and i've heard that several times and i say that humbly but that's more of a bigger compliment to me than, oh my God, you're an amazing vocalist. Oh my God, you're an amazing guitar or piano mm -hmm. player. Like when they tell me specifically, like we love your energy, that I'm not aiming for that compliment, but that is the biggest compliment that I feel like I could get because that's gonna impact them the most. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Um, and Isai, yourself, what makes you stand out? Because you do a few, a few different things as well. Yeah, there's quite a few different things. Um, uh, you know, man, it's, I've been trying to process how to articulate it. Um, it's a, a word, I, I, like a phrase called like being a servant leader. Um, it's not really something you hear, you know, dropped in the community, but you know, leading through service and really just like humbling yourself to the person and not being, and even though it's like they're coming to you for the work and a lot of people could play, you know, like real macho about their, Oh no, I'm the, I'm the owner of this business. It's like, you know, like, yes, I am the owner of the business, but I'm actually, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to work for you. Kind of like offering your heart kind of thing, instead of just offering, instead of, you know, offering the service is, you know, obviously the, the most important thing, but offering the heart behind it. And like, like much like her, it's giving them the energy and it's, you know, like in sales and marketing, you know, I went to a conference many years ago and there was an impactful line and, uh, the guy was like, you know, what is sales? You know, what is marketing? A lot of people are like, oh, it's uh, uh, transactions, it's money, it's, you know, all of these surface level things. And he goes, everybody's right. But I want you guys to think about this. He's like, sales and marketing is more of like a transfer of energy. It's a transfer of enthusiasm. It's a transfer of trust. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really being able to have the customer or the client or the audience on the other end feel that is something that, I believe stands out uniquely because only you have that energy that you can give out. Like, you know, Colton's energy is going to be unique than what my energy is or Melissa's energy is. Right. And I think in that sense, like that's one way that we stand out and it's really the set of principles that you carry with you leading into the job or the job or into the service you're going to provide that kind of thing. Right. You right. Know? And I, I feel like that's something that really uh, sets would set me apart or set her apart from, you know, that kind of thing is, uh, it really just comes out to energy. Like it's, it's something that's different. Um, and of course, apart from that, just the experiences that have led up to being able to provide that job or, or that service, um, to do that work, you know, um, and it doesn't even feel like work. I, I use those words, but it's doesn't feel like that, you know, just to talk to normal people. So they understand. <laughs> 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 to normal people. <laughs> That'd be a little crazy to be an entrepreneur, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's really being able to, to to uniquely mold the experiences that you've had as a business or an entrepreneur to what the client needs or uh, what the audience is seeking, and so it's it's being able to have that that self awareness and just awareness in general of how to navigate the uh, the job or you know the work. So. Most most uh, entrepreneurs starting out still have a, a nine to five, so to speak. I know Melissa, I know you don't. This is my nine to five, but it's nine p.m. to five a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and Isai, do you have anything that you do for um, nine to five? Uh, not, not not necessarily nine to five. Um, a lot of a lot of my stuff has come from like doing crypto or doing stocks. Um, has been from doing websites. Uh, doing affiliate marketing. Um, so, I mean, I guess that would be all considered like nine to five. Like, cause it's, it's no, but, that's, that's all very entrepreneurial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not, you're not punching a entrepreneur brewer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on, yeah. It just rolls off the tongue and okay. falls off a cliff. 
it just uh, uh there's no nine to five there's no there's no punch card um right. even over the years i've done like gig services um stuff like that um i guess i don't know if they call them economy gigs now or what they call them but um uh, literally just doing a little bit of everything honestly doing anything to not have to do you know a regular nine to punch five maybe yeah, to not punch a time clock yeah that's, that's awesome honestly, and i've always enjoyed being in the workforce but there's just like that like deep down inside you're like man i could be doing something different i could be at home or i could be you know out and about doing what i personally love to do and it's you know they say that that a nine to five is like a salary is the most addictive thing in the world because it's security, it's safety. It's, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Um, but I will say like trying to literally do anything that it takes to not have a punch card, just to have that freedom. So, but if I may add to that, I think just because I personally know him, it's not cause I'm, I'm very much again aware about how I word things and how I mm -hmm. see things. Um, it's not that he wants to stay away from the nine to five. It's because he's so looking forward to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. So it's kind it's of weird. like the, the flip of, I don't want to be late. I want to be on time. Like it's more of like the positive. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Direction. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I just don't want to work nine to five. That's. Oh like, no, that's, that's not the way I took it at all. Yeah. I yeah. Took it is like, you know, I think most people are searching for this freedom and you guys, Props to you guys. Yeah, you're literally off the chain. Like you aren't connected <laughs> to that. <laughs> you guys are doing it. You're most entrepreneurs, you know, always have a nine to five and then they're doing their side gig until it turns into something else. But you guys, y'all are off the chain. So that's awesome. And just real quick, so anybody else starting out in in the field that you're familiar with, what kind of advice could you give them? What piece of advice could you could you add to that? Um, it, it really okay so it's like internet marketing I would say internet marketing but digital marketing or advertising or you know even online sales or you know because um, that's where I originally started I, I mean one thing that really impacted my life and that people really said stood out so I used to do a lot of direct sales you know uh, literally walking the streets of San Antonio with the box in hand and products in the box and you know talking to every single person you know peddling products and man, that was a painful, painful experience, but one that had a lot of growth because it's like, like this isn't a regular, I'm behind a desk, you know, or behind a computer typing away kind of thing. It's just, you're talking to everybody that's everybody. Like I have seen, I've seen some crazy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, my trainer, my trainer, as, as <laughs> my trainer, my trainer you know, uh, it was pretty intense, but one thing that I always realized, you know, with the internet, it's like, there's, you can do one-to-one -one approach or you can do a one-to-many approach, kind of mm -hmm. like what we're doing here. Like, like we're doing one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you know, digitally, but this is going to go one-to-many, you right. know, and me introducing that concept even five or six years ago, almost 10 years ago, like people are like, you're crazy. Like, dude, like, no, just, just one-to-one. -one. Like, what are you doing? What, don't get that out of your head. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like I'm telling you. And over the last 10 years, you know, doing this kind of thing you know, podcasting interviews, uh, putting content on the internet has really become the foundation of being a doorway to being able to enter entrepreneurship because mm -hmm. putting out that content, putting out that energy, nobody knows, you know, until you get the exposure, you know, nobody knows that, Hey, this is what, Oh man, I have, I have a gig for you. Like, Oh wow. You play guitar. Cause they look at your content. Like, Oh, like, I mean, that's, that's kind of like how I started doing music with her was just like, mm -hmm. Oh, you play guitar. You know, and same her content. I was like, "Oh, you're you you're a musician. You're a DJ. Like you host events. Like wow. Like, and it's content. At the end of the day, it becomes content. And uh, on another podcast that I was on, um, I will say it's a little different. Sorry. Um, oh my bad. <laughs> That's all the same. It's all the same. Um, is if you build deep, they will build wide for you. Mm -hmm. Like when you, when you really build the connections deep with individual people, instead of just surface level numbers, which I think, you know, social media has, has really impacted society like that, because the first thing we do, how many followers, how much engagement, how many likes, you know, per post or something like that. But really it's just engaging with each individual person. Like at the beginning of the year, you know, I would put up a post 
and you know I would I would I would blast it out you know into the into the stratosphere as I, as I would say and um, literally every single person that engaged with that post I would try and build as deep as I could with them so that way they you know, oh man like this guy just messaged me or you know this person just messaged me and it's building a community and uh, contributing to it and connecting with those individual people I say is the first step you know to entering the gateway doorway of entrepreneurship and, and it's interesting you say whenever you send out a message and stuff into the ad sphere um because it's an ad <laughs> sorry i had you <laughs> so you're connecting with these people one-on-one -on -one. it's not it's not an automated bot or something like that an autoresponder and i think that people see the difference between those yeah you know, I, I think they notice it feels different it really does feel different you know even like on a platform like linkedin like just recently i started reusing my linkedin again and mm -hmm. literally half my inbox was hey you know some kind of sales pitch and i'm like man uh, this it just really turns you off kind of thing it's right just, it, especially when it's a super long thing oh that's gosh. like all you're like man that's the same one you send to everybody yeah. with an auto feel for my name <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> um so how how does the audience reach you guys maybe if they want to you know, check out some of your services or hire you all for something. How do they find you? Um, on social media, like almost every platform, so under Melissa Brisenio, um, or Melissa Brisenio Music. So Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm sure I have other platforms that I haven't used in a while. YouTube, <laughs> YouTube, um, and uh, I think that's yeah, I think. And there's that social platform you can probably. Look for yeah. <laughs> and yourself, you say? Big spark on there. <laughs> yeah, uh, same for me would be. Um, I'm I'm primarily currently on Instagram, trying to change that. Um, trying to revamp my Facebook and and my LinkedIn, but everything is pretty much under Mr. George Salinas with the G. Um, or you can honestly just type in Ethai E S A I Salinas, and uh, you're pretty much gonna find me. And like I don't. I think there's very many east side salinas um so um yeah but for me be linkedin youtube um facebook and instagram awesome awesome um let me see um also too both of you guys are progressing in your in your careers of entrepreneurship uh where do you all see yourselves in about five years i don't know what i'm doing next week <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hold on, whoa, whoa. And I know, I know that's totally a loaded question, but I, I'm just curious. It helps set an intention, though. Helps yeah. Set. Yeah. Um, it's just, and it sounds so like unexciting, but um, you know, growing up, it was you know, the I want to be a, a rock star. I want to be you know a performer on stage. And the people that I saw growing up, um, I still have that idea. I have it let go of that idea but i'm also not holding myself to a level that if i don't get to this level that means i have failed that means that i haven't achieved my dream um you know to touch base on like you know growing up um i even had teachers or, pro or professors that would question like i don't know if you should be in music and they would literally question me and you know it was for me, it was like a huge blow, like what you think I'm not. And it was like this one person that would just say like, I don't, I don't know if you're good enough. I don't know if you're honestly, that's what they would tell me. And I remember feeling like just devastated, like, this is what I want to do. What do you mean? I'm not good at this. You know, it's not like easy, like being a lawyer or a doctor, you go to school, you do the math, you do the work and you do your tests and you get certified. Then you become a doctor. Like there, you could be the best thing in the world. You could have the perfect face, the perfect body, the perfect team around you, and it won't work out. Like there's, this is like worse than rocket science, or better, I said, than rocket science, because there's no, there's no formula. I mean, people say there's a formula to making, you know, right. rock star, rock star, and I guess there is, but what it comes down to is, it sounds selfish, but my happiness and my happiness with my daily life, and so if I continue with that. I'm going to attract events and people to my life that are going to share those same idea, ideas mm -hmm. and ideals of your happiness brings the right energy, which brings the right people, 
which brings the right events to your life that will help you to continue what you want to do. So for me, as long as I'm just doing what I love um, and I can, you know, put a little bit of food on the table with that, like that's what's most important to me. If, if it gets bigger, I'm, I'm happy with that too. Will you be, will we be seeing you on American Idol? <laughs> um, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um, and not because I, I, I don't believe in it or anything like that. Um, I feel like, everybody has the right platform for them. For me, I just feel that I have a different path and that I'm not trying to do a quick shot up to the top kind of thing. And not that American Idol or the voice kind of stuff is or isn't. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's like, I like, I like being in the so-called trenches of like, when is my next gig? You know, when, how am I going to get my next gig? Like that, the journey, of going to my destination is what I'm enjoying. You know, on my social media, my, my tagline is, I'm just a girl, you know, chasing her dreams and enjoying this ride called life. Like, that's, that's what I'm doing. And in doing that, like, that's, it does, honestly, not that it doesn't matter if I get to my destination, it's like what's gonna happen along the lines of whatever my goal is gonna be, because my goal could change. But so long as I'm enjoying that journey, like, that's what's important to me. Most people are, are, are scared to death of uncertainty, but it sounds yeah. like you, you love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm scared. <laughs> but, but not chasing what I love is even scarier in the fact that I've yes. my whole life having so. figures in the bank and a perfect house and, you know, 2.5 kids and 1.5 dogs, or whatever. And it's like still <laughs> not being like a dog and a half. <laughs> um, but the idea of not doing what I love because to appease other people or to make sure that I have like the job security scares me in a negative way like that's just not even an option at least for me for now for the next five years um, I'm gonna keep going with the journey that I have awesome that's a great answer and uh, Isai how, how are you um, I know you're contemplating all this while she's yeah. talking. You're like, keep talking. I have to keep thinking about this. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's not so much um, like where I see myself in five years in regards to like work or like what I do in terms of whether it's music or, you yeah. know, internet entrepreneurship, that kind of thing. But more like how much impact uh, I, I've had with the, how much positive impact with the community that I've brought in five years, you know, that's really what I quantificate, I guess, is, you know, in five years, you know, I have a, a desire to, to bring a lot of impact and value and, you know, contribution to the community, not just through like, you know, the services that I provide, but through the messages that I'm sharing and through, through the content, a lot, a lot like we're doing right now is, you know, hope in five years, I'm doing a lot more of this. Yeah. You know, and really connecting and, and sharing the, the story and, you know, tidbits of advice and, you know, just, just enjoying the process. Honestly, the one thing about entrepreneurship and is it gets to be a lifelong process. It's a lifelong journey, you know, because a lot of times in, in life we hit goals and we hit milestones and you have that, that high for a little bit. And then it's just like, now what? But with entrepreneurship, it's, it's, a, it's a lifelong, you know, journey. No and, cap. Yeah, no cap, no cap. Yeah. Literally, I mean, at this point, the sky's not even going to be the limit. It's going to be like Mars. <laughs> the only cap I have is Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> so last, last question for you guys. Um, obviously, you're a couple that's, you're both entrepreneurs. And how important do you think it is to support each other, even if one of you was a nine to five and the other was a, you know, trying to do the entrepreneurial lifestyle. How important do you think it is to help support each other in your ideas? Honestly, it's, it's the foundation. Uh, communication is the foundation. The communication is the foundation. And our communication is so similar. It, it, there's no effort almost. And I really think it comes down to being self-aware with what you want and who you are, much as she's very self-aware of who she is and what she wants. And so we're able to communicate that and being able to share that and, 
you know, despite like maybe previous stuff that's happened uh, in either previous relationships or with our families or friends right. and stuff like that, like we're able to navigate and be aware and share and communicate. I mean, really just the word is communication. It's really just communication and not being afraid to share it. And a lot of times, a lot of the problems come from keeping it bottled up and with, with most, I don't, I don't feel any need to bottle anything up. And I have my moments where it's kind of like, you know, like there's something really, really going on in my head. And she's just like, she sees it and she's aware of that. And she's able to talk to me and I'm just, you know what? And I just share it. And that's really what it comes down to is being open with each other. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I think it's super important. Um, more than anything is with any relationship romantic or not like you need to be honest with yourself about who you are and who you want to be because you might say you're a positive person but if you're just kind of a pos inside that like, you're going to attract pos people around you right and so it's about being aware of who you are and knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses, and to just be aware of them because you're going to attract those people. And, um, you know, life comes at you and you think you're this person, you're like, huh, yes, I wasn't, you know, and then and you shift and you adjust. And it was when I made an adjustment in my just overall life that literally, like, I was flooded with just people in general in my life that were very uplifting, that were very um, supportive. Um, and then with Isai, it's the same thing. He's very supportive. He's very strong in who he is, but he's also very, um, I guess, aware of who I am and where I'm at. And he's, he's, um, what's the word? He's supportive, like he's strong, but he's also soft in the sense when it comes to me, like he, he knows when to be strong with me. He knows when to be soft with me. Sometimes I have to remind him. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> but he's, he, he's just, he's a very good mix of um, strong and, and supportive, if that makes any sense. It sounds like you guys have a really good polarity. Yeah. And that you really build each other up and not tear each other down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is what most people do. Right. So that's you know. the case. Like, why even do it? Like, you know, I could tear myself down all by myself. I don't need help. Right. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've got that down. Trust me. I've had a whole lifetime to be good at that. <laughs> well, guys, is there anything else that you want to share? Just uh, any tidbits or... Uh, Any good books that you're reading right now that people have to read or anything like that? Uh, yeah. Um, we were talking about, you know, the, the advice to give to people. The one thing that I was mm -hmm. thinking about is that um, I, I have a degree in music marketing. So I went to college, you know, I did the, you know, the proper thing. But um, it's like, okay, now what? I have a piece of paper, what do I do with it? You know, and the music is like, it was, it was helpful. I'm very thankful that I have that piece of paper, but I just recommend people, no matter if it's in music, you want to be a doctor, you know, you know, whatever you want to do um, is to um, intern as much as you can be around the people that you want to be, you know, you want to um, be a musician. So, you know, if you're old enough, like go out to gigs, like go out and just meet musicians you know, go into the chats, you know, online about where the next big gig is at, or you want to be a drummer, like go and hang out with drummers. You want to be right. a singer, go and hang out with singers, you know? Um, and it doesn't have to be like trying to reach out to Ariana Grande or Rihanna, but it's like, you know, reach out to the local, you know, talent in your city or wherever you're at. And, you know, Hey, so just literally. I'm Melissa Bresno's. And <laughs> 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 um, like literally like you, you you would be surprised how much people, the right people are willing to be like oh my god like you really want to follow me or you really want me to help you like i would love to help you like oh really like oh thanks i didn't think you would want to but you don't know if you don't ask right. um being comfortable with being told no and being having that you know quote thick skin of like you know like so now what what's plan x what's plan y what's plan z um, and it, it really helps to filter out people that just kind of want to do it. The people that like, I'm like 
mentally getting beat up. I'm all bruised and scratched up, but man, this is awesome. Like right. I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Um, Get outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I haven't read it in a while, but one of my favorite books we were talking about is um, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. I've read it. Love it's an amazing book. book. <laughs> I literally read it like I was like, I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. Um, it just kind of goes with the same idea of like, you just, you don't know how good you are until you figure something out and you just, you know, just believe it in yourself. It sounds so cheesy, but it's, it really does come down to that. Cause if you don't have that foundation, you will get sold one way or another. If you've read the alchemist, <clears throat> you should also read, um, the four agreements. I have that. There you go. It's all sitting right there. <laughs> oh, bam. Bam. <laughs> 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 that's way cool <laughs> i read those those books back to back and seeing how they connected like was kind of mind-blowing i mean they're yeah. totally different books and right. you know everything but yeah it was it was a very exciting <laughs> that was awesome. i swear that was a plan it was not <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny <laughs> <laughs> oh good times <laughs> um, isai what was it? Oh, just like kind of like parting, parting thoughts. Kind yeah, of. yeah. Um, and book. Um, I'll start with the book, um, The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. Mm -hmm. um, I originally heard it as an audio. Um, I actually, I love audio books. Uh, I'm more of an audio book person, uh, passive learning, um, being in the car, as Tony Robbins might say, net time, no extra time. Um, so literally just always actively filling your mind with something. And I will say kind of that leads into my parting thoughts is, you know, what you listen to on a daily basis, you know, what you allow to influence you, whether it's music, I mean, anything is even down to the, the lyrics that you're listening to in a song affect you, even if we don't realize it. I mean, think about it, you might be walking around and there's that tagline in the song or the hook uh, um, and you're just singing the hook. And if you really listen to the lyrics, you're singing sometimes like, oh, why am I singing that, you know? But right. then, like, <laughs> and um, uh, part of, yeah, so it really it just comes down to what you're digesting on a daily basis, what you're, you know, filling yourself up with, you know, uh, that's, and that's kind of what the strangest secret is about is the power of the mind. And right. if you, in entrepreneurship or anything really in life, if you don't have a strong mindset, if you're not willing to push through, which takes that strength, it's gonna, you're going to find yourself hitting a lot of brick walls and, you know, feeling like you're struggling, but really it's just, you know, digging a little deeper and filling yourself up with more positive thoughts and ideas um, and challenging current thoughts and ideas that you might have now and building up new beliefs and letting go of old ones that are old limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And it's, I know like right now we're in like this uh, phase just online really where mindset is becoming the foundation of a lot of talks because mindset really is the foundation of anything that we do, whether in sports or music, you know, getting on stage or, you know, ca calling that client or, you know, trying to, you know, just do your thing, you know, foundation is mindset. And, you know, like we said, I talked about with us, like communication with, the people around you, but the communication with yourself and having a positive feedback loop that you can rely on. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and, and I know I said last question, but I have one more question. Are you guys wearing <laughs> pants? What's that? Yeah. Are you wearing pants? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dress. not. No guys. I mean the, the I pants in your life. Like, are you wearing the pants in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for. Uh, like, I can totally like not wear pants, and he, how would he know? He's gonna ask me. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> thank you guys so much for taking time out of your busy morning and and coming to chat with me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and we'll see you guys soon. Okay. Sounds good. Maybe sometimes we go.
You're gonna find yourself somewhere, somehow.